Welcome to the first episode of vSphere uh, Breakroom Chats. In this series, we will bring uh, VMware and partner experts to talk about uh, VMware's vSphere and cloud products. These fabulous part, uh, experts will also share their background, industry trends, and general tips for IT experts. Uh, <clears throat> this is a special episode because this is the kickoff and the most in the first, first episode of this. So, um, so welcome. What we love about what we love to drink is very important to us. So we'll also talk about our favorite beverages um, in this uh, series. So today's episode, we're going to talk about artificial intelligence and machine learning. First of all, quick introductions. Uh, Justin, can you please share your background and what you're doing at VMware right now? Yeah, great to be here, Shabit. Thanks for the invitation. Um, I joined uh, VMware in 2007, working on Java and J2EE and progressed through a whole bunch of different technologies, most of them emerging technologies and found myself in big data and machine learning by 2016, 17. So since that time, I've been working largely on machine learning and most of the time on GPUs from NVIDIA as well. Fantastic. Most important question, what's your favorite drink? Well, I like a cup of tea in the morning and my favorite Zabar's cup. So Barry's tea wakes me up in the morning, but about an hour later, I'm into lattes, heavily into lattes. So I, I like those as well. That's Excellent. it. That's Excellent. during work hours. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Then we have the non-work friendly hour, hour drinks. <laughs> yeah, we changed a different substance then, yeah. Yeah. Um, so a yeah, quick introduction to myself. I work as a product marketing manager at VMware. Been in the industry about 20 years or so um, with a whole bunch of different things, manufacturing, tech support, last 10 years in uh, sales and marketing, uh, B2B and B2C. Um, last five years or so, it's been in the B2B space. Uh, my day does not start without my favorite coffee. So that's my favorite drink. Uh, <clears throat> Justin, what does... What excites you about the this area, artificial intelligence, and why do you think it's uh, this important? Well, it's hard not to be excited about AI ML today because it's it's all over the news. You know, you hear it on TV, you hear it on the radio. Everyone's talking about um, you know image recognition, uh, facial recognition, and all that sort of application that goes with machine learning. But I think what gets me interested is the levels of innovation when you think about it. Almost every tier of the stack is being innovated very, very quickly today. You know, we're building bigger models. We're tackling more difficult problems with more data. The models have to be spread across multiple GPUs. We're doing this distribution now as well. And so, uh, you know, the whole theme that I think we're trying to follow at NVIDIA and VMware is democratizing this, bringing this to the citizen data scientist, if you like, the person who's not perhaps the expert statistician data scientist, but uh, bringing this to this new community so that everybody can use this. And democratizing AI is a big theme at VMware, as you know. So we want to sort of make this not a scary thing for people anymore, that you can bring it into your data center, run it on regular VMs and get the best from it. And that's very exciting as well because we're educating a lot of folks on it and I'm educating myself every day on this and the amount of learning I'm doing really keeps me interested. It's, uh, and it's amazing. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, what is the high level direction and why, where do you think artificial intelligence and machine learning is headed toward today? Well, it's, um, it's, almost pervasive in every application. You know, every, almost every type of application from finance to telecom to medical to healthcare to insurance, everybody is finding a use for this. And it's really quite new to us software developers. It's not the same thing as software development because the focus is the model and the quality of data that you feed the model to educate your model on what the patterns are. So delivering AI is not quite the same as delivering software artifacts. Um, we've, we've learned that lesson. And so we need a new discipline. We need a new uh, process for doing that. So I think we're maturing, but we're not there yet as far as a mature process for doing AI. Lots of people are learning. And actually, there's quite a lot of failure going on. 50% of projects 
may not make it into production is what we hear from the analysts. So while at the science end of AI, the models are huge, GPT-3, a famous model, is billions of parameters, you know. Uh, so at the research and, and advanced end of AI, things are getting bigger and bigger and better, actually, uh, better language recognition, better image recognition. At the enterprise level, we're just about beginning to understand this work and how to do it the right way and how to have a process and target the right types of business problems with it. So it's a it's a bifurcated market where there's huge innovation going on in, in the high end and there's democratization going on in the sort of followers to that. Yeah. Great point, right? So <clears throat> as I think about this, this a little bit more, right? Like, like you're saying, this is a pretty innovative space, right? You know, we're kind of breaking grounds at this space, not, you know, artificial intelligence community as a general, right? Yep. Uh, <clears throat> what is the customer problems in, that you encounter in some of these deployments as you're talking to customers? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and the, and that's, that's the crux of the matter here, which is what are people experiencing? And exactly. So, because it's a very fast pace of innovation, lots of things are changing. There are lots of moving parts. You know, TensorFlow gets changes into it. I ran into a, a TensorFlow problem myself today. Uh, libraries are changing. Drivers are changing. And when I mentioned that innovation at every tier of the stack, there are new GPUs appearing. There are combined GPUs and networking cards appearing. You know, all kinds of speed ups for getting data in, into and out of the GPU. So a lot is changing, and that causes one level of complexity for people to deal with. But also what, what people tend to do sometimes is build it and they will come, you know, build the data science environment without having a business problem to solve first or identified to solve. So target your data scientists or your people who are doing this for a living, target them at a known business problem is a key, is a key success factor. Uh, and we've learned that the hard way by building it um, in advance, as it were, and waiting for the business problem to spring up that will justify the use of this technology. So use this as a tool. It's not, it's not meant to be pursued in itself. It's a very interesting subject. There are tons of white papers, tons of presentations on Coursera, Stanford, millions of places to get education on this. But don't pursue it as an end in itself. It's, it's a tool to get to your goal. That's, uh, that's some of the best practices that we've uncovered. And people need a simpler stack, a simpler set of products to start out with. And so NVIDIA and VMware got together and produced the NVIDIA AI Enterprise suite of software, an AI-ready platform effectively that from the hardware up through the Kubernetes layer and the virtualization layer and up to the data science layer, there's an integrated suite there that you can you know, go to VMware and NVIDIA for, for help on and advice on and support. And that, that way we hope to simplify this a little bit for our customers. Excellent. Excellent. So we have a bunch of problems and you just kind of explain how NVIDIA and VMware are partnered together, right? Yes. What are the industries in which are showing interest in our solution? Yes, um, th th this is very exciting because I'm I I'm in customer facing situations quite a lot too. So the finance industry has already discovered fraud detection is a business problem for them that they can solve using machine learning. It's, that's a known thing. Uh, the universities are doing lots of image enhancement, image recognition, medical imaging. Uh, healthcare is doing a lot of that. Uh, the insurance companies are doing the equivalent of their Monte Carlo risk analysis with machine learning. Um, banking is using XG Boost to study customer trends, customer uh, behavior. Um, the, uh, the whole world of natural language recognition or NLP, natural language processing, is a hugely fruitful area. You know, we can generate text now that looks like somebody wrote it, or we can understand the sentiment behind what you're speaking to your chatbot. We can understand that sentiment as well as the meaning of what's going on. And that's done using some of the bigger models, the GPT models, etc. cetera. So uh, almost every industry has an application that fits this technology. And I can't think of an, uh, an industry that doesn't. Manufacturing, for example, robotics, um, inventory tracking, 
um, many more, many more applications. So I think finance, as, as always, is in the, the lead as far as adoption is concerned here, but there are many industries following it as well. Yeah, I mean, credit reporting, um, <clears throat> you know, credit, credit approval, credit reporting, insurance, those people have been ahead of the game on this for the longest time. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So fantastic. That's all the questions I had today, Justin. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Shobhi. Great, great to be here. Thank you. Excellent. Excellent. Um, <clears throat> and most importantly, thank you for our viewers and listeners. Um, thanks a lot for your time. And this is your host, uh, Shobit signing off. Have a great day.